You said you start at eight. You haven't showed up. You're you're late for work. You're late yeah, for I work. Know. You're hiding uh, the, the entire time, yeah. and that does not look good on you. Welcome on board East Timor's chaotic national airline, which struggles to check you in and gives you severe food poisoning. Today we are flying to the youngest and most unknown Asian country, which only gained independence after a brutal civil war in 2002. Timor Leste is currently trying to establish a national airline, and I went on a trip from Indonesia all the way to East Timor to give Aero Dili a try and explore the nation's capital. My trip started on an early morning in Bali, Indonesia, and you guys know how excited I get about showcasing small and unknown airlines to the world. So I was very eager to check in for my trip to East Timor and review Aero Dili. However, the airline wasn't very keen to have me on board and tried everything to not let me fly with them today. At the check-in counter, I was told that I can't check in for today's flight and no reason was given, and that I should wait for the station manager who's going to talk to me. So right now I'm at the Air or Dili check-in counter, but apparently there's some issue uh, and they can't check me in, whatever it is, and they said, oh, let's wait for the station manager to sort it out. However, the station manager, no joke, is already an hour late for work. That's what we're dealing with here today. I was waiting for an hour and nobody would try to speak to me or solve the issue they created. And the station manager was nowhere to be seen, so it was time for me to take the matter into my own What's hands. Happened? Is he here now? Is he here? Yeah, he's still going to the toilet. He's hiding, he's hiding. I know he's hiding. It's not a, no, it's not an immigration problem. It is incompetence. He doesn't know the rules. Tell him to come here. I know he's hiding. He doesn't want to come and talk. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. What time did you start working? No. No, you showed, you showed up. What's your I name? Work. What's your name? No, no. What's I your work. name? No, no. What's your name? You said you start at 8. You haven't showed up. You're, you're late for work. You're late yeah, for work. You're not, following, no, you're, not, not, not following, you're not following the rules. Yeah, but then, like, you are here. You are everywhere. And you're not coming here. You're hiding uh, the, the entire time. Yeah. And that does not look good on you. It's not my problem, right? Try to solve the problem and don't hide. Yeah. Now we can problem the software. I can give you the boarding pass manual and it can go into the kit. So if you want. As well, and you should be uh, here the second the counter opens so you can deal with these kind of issues. Because I've been standing here for two hours like an idiot yeah, and nobody is talking to me. Yeah, like he's trying, he's trying really good. She doesn't know anything. Yeah, I know. And it's like really, it's just frustrating. <laughs> See you at the gate. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. And uh, no. No, no, that's not, no, no, it's not, sorry, that's not your problem, that's good, like I leave my luggage here, right? Yeah, I remember. All right, thank you very much, I'll see you at the gate, huh? thank you. So first I was told I need a visa, which wasn't true, and after I educated them on that matter, I was told that something was wrong with my name. After I tried to ask them about more details, they said everything is fine, and I'm good to go. What a strange airline. So I finally made it to the gate with a temporarily issued uh, piece of paper boarding pass and uh, so when I checked in they said apparently there was a problem with my name which turned out there was no problem with my name and then I asked if I can speak to the station manager because he created that problem but then I had to wait because he was an hour late for work and when I wanted to confront him as you can see right now he was hiding in the bathroom because he was afraid <laughs> to admit to his shortcomings or that the issue that he has created. So until now, I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> this is like, I mean, if they can't even do the basics of like checking in a passenger, how are they able to fly a plane? And I've seen a lot in those six years reviewing uh, airlines, but <laughs> this is this is uh, hilarious. We'll see how this continues, right? <laughs> Definitely in for quite. Uh, ride here today on Air Dili, the flag carrier of East Timor. But for now, let's shift our focus to Air Dili's only plane, a 14-year-old Airbus A320, which was originally delivered to the Mexican airline Volaris in 2008. Eight years later, the plane was transferred to Bangkok Airways, for which it operated for a few years. In March 2023, 
Eric Dilly took over the plane and is operating it ever since. The airline operates only one route at the moment and that's between Bali and Denpasar. Later this year, Singapore is going to be added to their network. Thank you. Hi, how are you? Thank you. And here we are, welcome on board the nation's flagship, featuring 174 seats in a standard 3-3 configuration. The crew appeared fairly nice and luckily the flight didn't seem too busy. I picked myself a seat in the very back again. It's pretty much the standard cabin of Bangkok Airways, the previous operator of this plane. Only the headrests have been changed. So guys, and here we are. Welcome on board Air Dilly's Airbus A320. Looks quite dated. And the thing is here on Air Dilly, you always just expect something to go wrong. And this is why I think it's the first airline in the world that has a prayer card at the seats in six different religions, whether you're Muslim, Catholic, Buddhist. You can make your little prayer hoping that things go right. We then pushed back for an on-time departure, a safety demo was underway and we were ready to go to Dili. So as we are heading to the runway, I just want to like point out that the crew is actually very lovely and very cute. Um, huge smiles on their face, so there is something positive to report uh, on Air Dili. And our flight time is like two hours, so let's see what the overall experience is going to be like. Uh, flying to Asia's latest country. We rocketed out of Bali and we got some beautiful views overlooking the island, which has turned into a very, very busy place, with half of the world moving there at the moment. However, once we reached cruising altitude, the crew got to work and it was time for the food review, not knowing that I was going to regret that meal. So we are good 20 minutes into the flight, I have a hot meal in front of me. Uh, there was no choice, so um, everyone is giving the same meal. I think it's chicken, no not chicken, beef maybe, uh, with fries and then, then there is a dessert as well. Uh, which is like a, a, a chocolate pudding. So um, yeah, let's see what it tastes like. In terms of beverages, a bottle of water was handed to each passenger. So and that concludes the lunch experience here in Aero Dili. Uh, the chicken beef was actually pretty decent, uh, not too bad, and uh, uh, the chocolate jelly not really my cup of tea, but I'm sure there's people out there who love a good chocolate jelly. Um, next on the agenda, I'm gonna check out the loo. The loo was fine and clean and probably falls into the category of nothing special, but it wasn't like that I had any expectations anyways. So yes, Air Daily passed its very first loo review. Congratulations. However, the seatbelt sign was turned on and we started our descent into Dili, the capital of East Timor and the country's only runway long enough to accommodate a modern airliner. Timor-Leste declared independence from the colonizing force Portugal in 1975, but a year later Indonesia invaded and declared it its 27th province. The situation turned into a brutal war which lasted for years and claimed over 200,000 lives. Years of unrest and brutality, as well as the Santa Cruz massacre in 1991, turned the world's attention towards Timor and its independence was restored in 2002, making it Asia's youngest country. And here we are, welcome to Nicolau Lobato International Airport, which is full of history and has seen quite some action over the years, from Japanese occupation to civil war and becoming a United Nations hub, yet the runway is barely long enough to accommodate an Airbus A320, and it needs to operate with restrictions. 
also the infrastructure can barely handle over 150 passengers at once and in order to grow and to attract tourism a lot of work needs to be done to match international standards but apart from all this the airport is extremely charming and an adventure on its own i was so happy to be here everybody has to get a visa on arrival uh, german germany that's good as a EU citizen, you don't need to get the visa. And after clearing immigration, I made my way to the hotel. Interestingly, the official currency of East Timor is US dollars. How much to uh, Timor Plaza? Ten Timor Plaza. Huh? Ten oh my hotel was a short 10 minute drive away from the airport and would cost me $10. My first impression of Dili it seemed like an interesting mix between the Caribbean and Asia. It had its very own flair, but everyone seemed very nice and I felt very safe as well. Dili itself has a population of roughly 300,000, which is a quarter of the overall population of the country. On my way to the hotel though, I could feel that my stomach isn't feeling very good and I had a feeling I might be in for a rude awakening later. Hi, how are you? So all checked in, welcome to the Timor Plaza. So and welcome to my room. Uh, $310 for two nights and this is the only hotel in the country with somewhat of western standards they set so it's a lot of like um, NGO UN people staying here and I barely think anyone is coming here for leisure or tourism um, but tomorrow I'm gonna explore Dili a little bit and then the day after we'll be flying um, back on Air Dili and then we're gonna see what the departure experience is like the airport and I just really hope it's gonna be a lot better than it was today. So good morning guys. I not sure what I'm gonna get, get, take you guys around. I have the worst food poisoning showing up all evening and morning. Um, but it's most likely from the food I had on the flight because that's all I had yesterday due to the screwed up check-in experience. I didn't have time for breakfast, so yeah, not feeling quite well. Gonna rest a little bit and then perhaps in the afternoon I'm um, gonna head out and explore the city a little bit with you guys. Um, but yeah, a little update from, from my side. I hope I'm gonna feel better tomorrow to actually take the flight back, um, but yeah. Be all right. Let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN, a must have tool for any traveler and frequent flyer. By using a VPN, you surf the internet safe and anonymously, especially when using public Wi Fi. And you get around censorship all around the world. Whether you want to use Instagram in China, use WhatsApp calls in Dubai, or consume TikTok in India, or watch adult movies in the Middle East. And it also works on all your devices, but let me show you my favorite perk. Finding cheaper flight deals by changing my IP address to a low income country, saving me plenty of dollars every year. But also as a huge sport fan, I can watch my favorite football team from all around the world or access different libraries on Netflix by using Surfshark VPN. So, and by using the link in the description box below or using the code Josh Cahill, you will get three additional months for free which is an absolute great offer so go check it out and now let's go back to the review so the receptionist gave me something against food poisoning I feel much better and they organized a driver for me so i'm going to try to explore um the city a little bit i'll take you guys with me when Hi. The day arrived, i will okay. just wait here. i'll wait here so what i love about coming to places like uh, timor is that even oh. here in the most remote places i have subscribers yes uh, that's uh, andre andre yeah andre and you are a yeah. doctor right? i'm a doctor yeah. i'm a medical doctor i'm the solace uh, travel just a lot to remote areas yeah. to provide a free medical care uh, to 74 percent population that are, st are still struggling for getting basic medical care that's amazing, such an amazing course. 
Still struggling, but I didn't want to waste my time in Timor, so I went for a little drive to explore the city. And the first thing the German in me noticed was a ship called Berlin. And guess what? This boat even has its own Wikipedia page. It was gifted to Timor by the German government in 2007, and it does connect Dili with the exclave of Okuzi. What an interesting find. Next stop was the city's most visited site, the statue of Cristo Rey of Dili, a gift from Indonesia in 1996. So as you can see up there is the main attraction here in Dili, the like statue of Jesus Christ. And it's apparently 600 steps to go up there, 15 minutes. Uh, so we're gonna take this. And apparently from up there, you have a beautiful view over the bay and uh, Dili. So let's go, let's conquer it. <laughs> How are you? Hey. Are you good? So generally, got a pretty good stamina. But given that I'm uh, quite food poisoned, though those tablets really helped me. I'm quite exhausted already. And I'm not even halfway there. Look at this. So here we are, halfway there. I feel shit. I feel like but I have a feeling that the reward up there is going to be the greatest feeling. 20 more steps. 20. We done it. Here we are. Interesting FG fact. The 27 meter tall statue was partially funded by the Indonesian flag carrier Garuda Indonesia and cost roughly 600,000 US dollars. The view from up here is wonderful. You can see the entire bay and capital from up here and if you ever come to visit Dili, make sure you come here and check out the view for yourself. So here we are, Jesus standing on the globe. There's one detail I notice, it's breaking my heart. My home, where I live, my emotional home, not where I'm from. Sri Lanka is not on the map. It's missing. <laughs> Why? Where are you? <laughs> Sad. Oh, and also to the local council, it would be great to empty the bins from time to time. It doesn't really look that appealing. So this is it. This concludes my visit and meeting the one and only. Jesus Christ. Now let's head back to the car. I made it. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Next stop was the Timorese Resistance Archive and Museum, which highlighted the struggle for independence from Indonesia, which was opened in 2005. I'm a huge history buff and I do love a good museum and I find the story of Timor quite interesting, so I decided to go for a visit as well. If you don't like reading and aren't really into history, that place will be very boring to you. However, the ticket costs you $1 and in return you will get some great education on the country's past. On my way back to the hotel, the driver quickly showed me the country's largest cathedral, which was blessed and visited by Pope John Paul II himself in 1989. Let me also show you what a local shopping mall looks like. Whenever I travel to rather unknown countries such as East Timor, I love to visit supermarkets and compare products and prices. A bottle of Heineken will set you back by $3, and some Lurpak butter costs you a whooping $12.25, followed by white cheese for 4 bucks. A kilo of potatoes, however, will only cost you a dollar, and those nice juicy eggplants are being sold for just 50 cents. A bottle of Bombay Sapphire costs $29 and a can of tuna sells for $1.25. Do you think the prices are reasonable? Let me know in the comment section below.
and of course I had to try a local Burger King as well. And guess what? It just tasted as bad as it does everywhere else in the world. So back at the hotel, that was me exploring Dili. Now you know what to see when you come here and I can feel that um, Still a bit weak, so I'm trying to recover a little bit, so I'm fit for tomorrow's flight and a departure experience here out of Dili. Very much looking forward to that. And guys, a beautiful good morning. It is 6.45 a.m. in the morning. I had one hour of sleep because I felt so sick still from that food poisoning that this is going to be a difficult day. However, let's go to the airport. So here we are, beautiful good morning from Delhi International Airport. Doesn't look too busy. I was very skeptical and scared whether there are going to be any more issues upon check-in as I experienced on my incoming flight, but it seems that the airline got their shit together this time around. How are you? Fine, thank you. Do you have a fridge, fridge magnet? Yes. Right. How much is it? $10. $10? All right. That's the most expensive fridge magnet ever, but I'm happy to support the local economy. After I purchased the world's most expensive fridge magnet, I made my way to the departure hall. Delhi is probably the smallest capital airport in the world, and apart from daily flights to Bali and Darwin, no other routes are being served as of now. Aerodili wants to add Singapore flights soon, which previously were operated on a charter basis by Druk Airlines, the national airline of Bhutan. There are also domestic flights operated by Twin Otter Jets. But from what I saw, the airport is extremely tiny and wouldn't be able to handle a lot more flights unless they build a proper terminal. We then boarded our flight to Dampasar. The return ticket cost me roughly $500 and the only other alternative on this route is the Indonesian airline CityLink, which also offers a daily service. And there is our ride again, the airline's only plane, the Airbus A320, ready to take us to Bali. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Very good. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> This time I picked a seat in row 1, with a close proximity to the lavatory in case I need to drop again. Better safe than sorry. Again, the flight wasn't too busy, maybe around 100 passengers joined me on this flight to Bali. And it also doesn't appear that the crew is from East Timor, but rather Indonesian. Well, I might be wrong. Safety instruction card. Out of Dili, witnessing some beautiful views out of the window, leaving East Timor behind. It was definitely an interesting place. I would love to discover what's actually beyond the capital and get to know more about the country. However, once we reached cruising altitude, the crew served breakfast, but knowing that there is something wrong with their catering, I passed on this occasion and just accepted a bottle of water. Strangely, a lot of passengers refused to eat on that plane. Maybe because they went through the same experience? Who knows? So I kind of give you guys a full summary of my Aero Dili experience once I cleared immigration. But if you don't want to miss out on my next video, uh, my flight, which I'm going to take in three hours, flying Superjet, the latest airline in Indonesia, then hit that subscribe button right now. So guys, and here we are. Welcome to Bali, where I started my journey three days ago and what to say about Aero Dili. So let's start with the positives. 
I love the country, I love the people, I love the cabin crew, they were very kind, uh, very hard working. However, the problem probably lies somewhere else. Definitely the ground experience here in Bali was an absolute letdown, an absolute disappointment. Things like this shouldn't be happening, uh, especially the station manager should, should turn up at work on time and should be present and should be educated enough to deal with all sorts of issues and that was a big failure um, and that already left a bad impression on me and I imagine it happens to you it's very annoying um, also the food experience I got really bad food poisoning uh, it was the only meal I consumed that day so you never know where it comes from but there was something off about that meal that put me in such severe pain for the past two days, including today, that they might want to look into their catering um, as well. I mean, it's a great course to have a flag carrier, to build a nation. It's a great mission that they have. And that is, but it doesn't spare you from feedback and from the reality. Customers want to be happy and you need to do your job professionally you need to be aware of your shortcomings so in order to soar higher to improve to become a really strong and professional airline and i think this is my feedback this is it i'm going to collect my bag now and then i'm off to jakarta on superjet if you want to uh, access my extra perks check out my patreon page in the description box below if you want to have access to my whatsapp group early access to my videos uh, get a cahill key ring or have your names in a credit it's a really cool uh, little family that we have over 500 uh, people so far so feel free to join if you want to get a little bit behind the scenes i'm going to collect my bag now and then i'm off to jakarta guys wherever you're off to safe trip